Hey, what's up, Stock Compounders? Brad here. So today I want to talk about uh, six companies that Aswath Damodaran has valued. He put this out on Thursday, just a couple days ago, on August 20th. Uh, and I'm just, I'm loving this. So usually he puts out an occasional valuation uh, for a company, but this is like, you know, he went all out on this one. He essentially valued the six companies that are really driving the, the market right now, uh, particularly the S&P 500. Uh, and he, he refers to this acronym, FANGM stocks instead of the kind of previous fang stocks he added microsoft because as he describes here the valuation story for microsoft is really that you know it's an old company that has rebirthed itself it's it's kind of redefined who it is um so before i get too into the particular values that he calculated for these six stocks that are really leading uh, the U.S. equity market. I just want to kind of show you what's behind uh, the valuation work that Demodaran does. And for actually, for a little bit more background, he's a professor at NYU Stern. Uh, he's been teaching business valuation for 30 some years now. It's funny, I was home in Wisconsin uh, not that long ago visiting my parents, and my dad is a certified financial planner. And of course, I look up on his bookcase, and he has a book on corporate finance that was written by Demodran from the 80s. And I was just like, wow, now this guy's still going strong, and he has just, just so much experience uh, valuing businesses. Uh, but this is an example of when he valued Facebook in 2018 and you can kind of get a sense for his process of how to do that uh, he really starts with revenue uh, and then comes up with a an appropriate revenue growth rate from years one through five and then uh, he'll usually taper that down to kind of a mature company growth rate and you can see here he uses operating margin the change over time to calculate earnings before interest and taxes, you know, for each of the next 10 years, uh, and then kind of factors in the tax rate, uh, and then, you know, how much of that gets reinvested in the business, what's the free cash flow to the firm, uh, you can see in this last column. And then he um, essentially uses a terminal value, which is uh, a multiple times the free cash flow to the firm in year 10 uh, to get this terminal value discounts all of that back to present value, uh, both the terminal value and the sum of free cash flows from years one through 10. Uh, and then you get a value of operating assets, right? That's really a value of the free cash flow. Um, and then subtracts debt, minority interests, adds cash and non-operating assets. That's really just cash and cash equivalents. Uh, you can see here, there's a billion dollar fine. You know, that's, that was an expected fine that uh, Facebook was anticipating incurring back from the, the scandal uh, that was happening in 2017 and 2018. Um, and then you add, right, like I said, the cash, you get the value of equity, okay? Subtract the value of equity options, uh, divide that whole number by the number of shares outstanding, and you have your value per share. Uh, now, one thing I really appreciate about Demodran is he doesn't just give uh, a value for, for what he thinks a uh, stock is worth he comes up with a distribution of potential value um, based on you know, percentiles. And this is really based on what the probabilities of uh, kind of the potential outcomes for the future of these businesses based on the most important factors that uh, shape the value of the company. Okay, so there's a lot of thought that goes into these 
probability distributions for what for what these shares could be worth. Um, and I really like that he includes the story there because you know as his latest book, um, story and numbers. You know, it's 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 evaluation is not just about numbers. It's also about what your story is for for that company uh, into the future. Uh, and that story is, is where your assumptions plug in, uh, in terms of growth rates and operating margins and, you know, everything that is going to determine, everything that's going to go into uh, how much that company is going to be worth uh, moving forward. So you can see with the stories that he has assigned to these different companies that are really driving the valuation. Um, but let's take a quick peek. I created a spreadsheet uh, just so it's simpler. Uh, this is the median value that he came up with in this column, just to simplify things. So, you know, right off the top, uh, you can see Facebook is the only one where the value that he came up with is less than the current, or, or sorry, the, the price is less than the value, okay? There's a margin of safety there. You can buy it at a discount to the value that he calculated for what a Facebook share is worth. Um, so these, these are the prices as of today, Saturday, August 22nd. Um, so you can see there's a, there's a margin of safety here for Facebook, almost 20%. Uh, I was surprised by that. I valued Facebook myself not very long ago, and I came up with something like two hundred and twelve dollars per share. Uh, so, so Demodrin's value is significantly higher than that. Um, but another thing I want to note here: um, it's really important. He let us know which which companies he owned, right? before he did this valuation. Now, even someone like Demodrin, who's, you know, he's, he tries to be really unbiased, right? He tries to approach it very academically, rigorously, rationally. Um, you know, we all have our biases, okay? And one big bias that people bring into valuations is, you know, if they own a company, right? They've got skin in the game. They have a vested interest in um, wanting the valuation to be higher for that company because they own it. Um, so keep that in mind. He, he owned Facebook, Apple, and Microsoft before he did these valuations. Now, I'm not saying, you know, um, the, the numbers have been fudged for those companies because he owns them. It's just something to, to keep in mind. Uh, so you can see here Facebook, you know, the, trading at a discount at the moment, according to his valuation. Uh, Amazon, you know, significantly over overpriced, um, 18%. Netflix and Google, you know, not as much overvalued, um, just around 10%, 12%. Apple, you know, Apple is has just been on a tear recently. Uh, and according to Demodrin, you know, he, he sees Apple as very overvalued. Uh, and then Microsoft, you know, pretty overvalued, kind of on the order, same order as Amazon. Um, and so Demodrin actually, at the end of the video, which I encourage you to watch, he uh, tells us what he's going to do based on these valuations. And one thing he's going to do, uh, he already did, is sell Apple, right? He's owned Apple since 2017. He bought it around $75 per share. And based on this valuation, uh, he can't justify continuing to hold Apple in his portfolio. It's simply uh, too far above the value that he came up with. So he sold his Apple stake. Uh, Microsoft... You know, he bought even longer ago, 2013, and he's he's done even better on Microsoft than than he did on Apple uh, since 2017. But he doesn't see that Microsoft is at such uh, an irrational price that that he wants to sell. He's not going to sell Microsoft. He's going to continue holding. 
Now he did say if Microsoft gets up to a price where it's similarly overpriced to what Apple is right now, uh, he will very likely sell off that position. Uh, but it, it's not too overpriced at the moment. So he's gonna hold on to Microsoft. Um, Facebook, even though it's at a discount to what he thinks it's worth, uh, you know, he, he's going to hold on. He's not going to double down. He's not going to buy more. Uh, he's just going to he's just going to maintain that that current position. Uh, and then Google and Netflix, he thinks are close enough to a price that will get him interested. That those are on his watch list. Okay. It's just going to take one, you know, negative surprise for either of those companies, he thinks, for the price to come down into his buy range. So he's, he's watching Netflix and Google. And then Amazon, you know, it's kind of in no man's land. It's uh, not so expensive that, you know, he, he wants to short it. He's actually shorted Amazon in the past. Um, but he's also quite trepidatious about shorting Amazon at any price, just because uh, Amazon, in a lot of ways, seems to defy gravity, and it can do that for a very long time, uh, similar to Tesla. Uh, but certainly not very close to a price that he would be interested in buying into Amazon. So that's just kind of uh, uh, an update from Demodran about what he's seeing uh, in terms of price versus value in these six companies that have really driven the S&P 500 over the last decade. And, you know, particularly during this pandemic when, you know, most of the other companies in the S&P 500 have really lagged. But because these six companies are so large and because they've performed uh, so incredibly this year in 2020, They've really lifted the entire market. So I thought it was a fascinating, I, I always love when Demodran values a company uh, because he's, he puts such thought into it. Um, and by the way, uh, in this video that he put out on Thursday, if you go to the description, you can actually look at the spreadsheets that show all of the numbers that he used to value these six companies. So check that out. Warning, uh, it's, uh, it goes deep. It goes deep fast. There's a lot. There's like eight different tabs for these spreadsheets uh, with, with all kinds of numbers. Um, so if you're one to get overwhelmed, you know, just take, take that caution. Uh, but he's so thorough and I really respect uh, he's a teacher, first and foremost. He's, he's not an investor, okay? So uh, he's really driven by teaching, but at the same time, he does valuation work, uh, not just for the fun of it, he does it also to make money. So when he values a company and he finds uh, a discount to, to fair value, he will put his money where his mouth is. Uh, and that's something I really appreciate because when you do that, when you put your money into a company, uh, rather than just kind of valuing it from the sidelines, uh, it's a different game, right? There, there's, uh, there's an emotional component. There's biases that come in um, that can really make people act differently than if they were purely valuing a business for academic reasons. So I really appreciate that he does put his own money in when his valuation compels him to act on something. So anyway, guys, I will leave it at that. Check out this latest video from Aswat Damodran. Let me know what you think of his valuations of these, you know, six great companies that are really driving our economy right now. Um, you know, he says himself, th th these, these are to be challenged. You know, to put your own assumptions in here. There's nothing etched in stone about these valuations. These are really just based on his assumptions, his story. Uh, and he really encourages people to take what he's done and make it their own. You know, tweak the numbers to, to what matches your vision for the company or what, what you believe 
uh, is going to happen. So that's all I got, guys. I will see you in the next video. Take care.